Hi, I'm here to find out what the big emergency is for all these people who are walking and texting. Like this person, what's the big emergency? There's none. Excuse me, sir, why are you walking and texting at the same time? What is the what? emergency? Is that an emergency text? Let me see your text. Let me see that text. Let me see it, come on. What's the emergency, man? Why are you walking and texting? What's the big emergency? Excuse me, miss. Excuse me, yeah. miss. You can only text and walk oh, right, at the same phone. time um, if it's an emergency. Is that an emergency right now? Yeah. I, What's the emergency? I was telling my boyfriend about these shoes I saw. This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. What's this? He sent you a dick pic? It's Yo, good. you call that a dick pic? Let me, let me show you a dick okay, no, pic. You right. Excuse me, miss. What is the emergency that you are texting? I'm talking about Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones? Yes. Game of Thrones? Yes. Okay, to be fair, that is kind of an emergency. Actually. Carry on, carry on. Yeah. Walking and Instagramming. See? You're looking at all the ass on Instagram. You're missing all the ass in real life. Just look up once in a while. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that is a whole new level. That's actually probably okay. Way to find a loophole, bro. Who are you texting? Let me see, let me see the texting. Who's Dominic? He didn't reply to you, he just ghosted you. Let me reply, let me reply to him. Let me reply to him, let me reply to him. You up? Want to Netflix and chill in my ass? Wait, no, he needs to know. He needs to know. Everyone in the Cook County Jam wants to be a part of this great program. I learned how to be a um, better leader. I learned more how to work with a lot of other people. I basically, I've learned how to eat better. It was great to be with people in Chicago who understood what pizza is supposed to look and taste like. Guys, this pizza is genuinely awesome. You must have people lining up around the block to buy this. Actually, it's only for inmates. Guys, we gotta rescue Chicago from that bull deep dish pizza. Okay, I know the pizza's great, but this is not how you deal with conflict. All right, I'll be right back. Hey, where are you going with the pizza? Ronnie knew pizza this good wasn't meant to be caged. He also really loved prison escape movies. Ronnie, where are you? Look at the massacre. Sei un ladro di pizza. Guarda che pizza. Why are you doing that? In October 2017, Ronnie Chang smuggled thin crust pizza out of Cook County Jail. Oh, Ronnie loved pizza, but he also hated Chicago deep dish. He had to find a way to get thin crust pizza to the people of Chicago. All it takes to get pizza out is cheese, dough, and time. That and a big ass poster. Ronnie Chang who crawled through a river of marinara and came out smelling like basil. This is America, okay? We find people who commit crimes and then we lock them up forever. Yeah, that's why there's a lot of people innocent in jail and that's why our jails are so full. I don't think that a small amount of marijuana is, going, is worth putting somebody in jail for or ruining their life. If you have uh, the stigma of a bad record in the past, that's it, stuck with you. We don't care if you've been good for five years. So uh, you, you don't think people should be defined by that one mistake? No. You ever making mistakes in your life? No. Oh, that's too bad, you learned something. For some reason, Mark's policies of decriminalizing minor offenses seem to be supported by the citizens of Corpus Christi, which left me with another question. What the f is wrong with the people in this county? They knew you were a gang member, they knew you were soft on crime, and they still elected you. I'm just like them. Just because I hold an office now, doesn't make me any different than the people that actually elected me. Most politicians forget that. They think that they're above those individuals. Um, I don't. I, 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 my JC Penny suit, my tattoos. Well, how many tattoos do you have? Uh, I got a lot. Oh, can I see them? I'm not gonna show you my tattoos. Why? What's the problem? Do you have a tattoo on your penis? I have no tattoos on my penis. Well, prove it. Are you trying to see my penis? I'm just trying to see if you have tattoos on your penis. I have tattoos uh, higher above my penis. Well, let's my start there and work our way down. No, no, we're not gonna work our way down at all. After hours of painful negotiations, Gonzalez finally broke down. It's a little weird, man. No, it's not. I do this all the time. That's pretty cool. Do you want to see my tattoo? Sure, I want to see your tattoo. That's cool. It is. 
we modified a Glock handgun to shoot fish underwater. <laughs> you think this is a joke, but this is real. Wait, what? You can't catch them any other way. You gotta go down and shoot them. Of course. What could be more Florida than standing your ground for Mother Nature? Hey, you wanna hold it? No, I don't want my fingerprints on that. But Cortland stands by his science. So on this, when you fire it, the pressure comes out all at one time. So these are muzzle brakes that go onto the end of the gun. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're making it bigger. Bigger is usually better, we found, in general. Not always. Bigger. Depends on how you use it, really. Bigger is almost always better. Almost always, but not in every situation. Then he took me to an Olympic-sized shooting range to demonstrate some of what he does. And guess what? It's stupid. What do you say to critics who might say that you are, I don't know, an idiot? A redneck, a dumbass, who's just shooting up the oceans, and you're a psychopath. You know, criticisms like that. There's a war going on on our reefs in Florida. What are you talking about? This sounds like something you'd do in a first-person shooter if you're just f***ing around. This redneck John Wick thinks he's gonna save the environment with a gun? What's next? We nuke illiteracy? Someone must have a more intelligent solution. Uh, my name is Yuan Wong, and we're building a robot that uh, hunts invasive lionfish. That's what I'm talking about. There's just something about this guy. I don't know what it is, but I like him. Yuan Wang has founded a startup dedicated to building a lionfish terminator. Kind of. This is your killer robot? Um, it work in progress, yeah. It looks like a trash can with arms. Still, better than shooting a fish with a gun. It identifies the lionfish, then it shocks it, and it will suck it into a containment unit. But there was something weird about it. If you just start, you know, sucking, um, with the rim-driven propeller, then they'll just try to swim away. Whereas if you put them to sleep, you can just kind of get two probes on either side of them and stun them. Dude, I think you invented a fish sex robot. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think we did. Yeah, I think you did, man. And trust me, I know sex robots. Hey, uh, welcome to science class. Today, we're gonna talk about animals. And I know you kids all like the fancy animals, okay? But stop being so thirsty for hippos. Because unless you're a Colombian drug lord, you're never gonna own one, okay? Instead, today we're gonna talk about the animals you'll actually encounter. The ones that will infest your house. Animals like the fruit fly. This is a mild infestation. As far as insects go, fruit flies are pretty chill. They are like most Brooklyn hipsters. Very picky eaters and they have zero upper body strength. Also, they do it doggy style. <laughs> Who knew? <clears throat> anyway, getting rid of them is pretty straightforward. Just stop leaving piles of rotting fruit lying around. Duh! A worse infestation is bed bugs. Much like Army Hamer, they feed on human blood. Getting rid of bed bugs is almost impossible. So if you get them, the best solution is to just leave. Walk out the door, start a new life like Miley Cyrus. People think Hannah Montana was a character, but it was just who she was until she got bed bugs. Next up, ladybugs, or as scientists call them, women bugs. This is maybe the best infestation you can have. They don't really do anything, and for bugs, they look pretty. They're like beetles that just got their nails done. But enough about insects. Let's move on to mammals, specifically mice, the freeloader rodents. And to be clear, not all rodents are freeloaders. Uh, just look at squirrels. They're like small business owners, hustling out there, renting storage lockers for their nuts. But mice just want your food. Now, mice like to come into your home because it's nice and cozy. That's why the best way to deter them is to make your home cold and inhospitable, like the Scandinavians. If you do have mice, You'll know because they take these little shits in your house that look exactly like chocolate Tic Tacs, but they are not chocolate Tic Tacs. That's a lesson I learned many, many times. So normally uh, we would have a block of toilets, right? And then the uh, waste from the toilets would come here, it'll go into the machine, and then using solar power, we can turn the poopy water into clean water. So you stand by this? Yeah. Or I'll prove it. Okay. Did it work? Yeah. Well, how many times did it not work and you end up drinking your own shit? 
Well, it's worked so well that uh, we're actually working with NASA. Astronauts have to poop, and we can turn that poop into clean water and nutrients and even energy. Wait, do you say energy? Yeah. The uh, microbes in the bioreactor make methane. That's the same stuff that's in natural gas. You can burn it. Bill Gates, you sneaky bastard. You just found a filthy little back door into the most profitable industry in the world, energy. You didn't say anything about energy. Yeah, it's one way to make it cheap to process the sewage is to sell these outputs. You should open with that next time. Don't open with the saving the world, kids and disease thing. Open with, yo, we're making toilets that can convert shit into energy. We need to make these toilets as expensive as possible. Because based on my research, everyone poops. I mean, everybody. Well, unless we make them super cheap, they're not gonna get out to the poorest who need them the most. Look, I know you've made your money. Some of us here are still trying to win this game. Well, if you have an idea, let us know. I've got nothing but ideas for this. Okay. So this is an iPad. <laughs> Great device, I love using it. Hey, um, hey, yeah. So what's the worst seat on a plane? Next to the toilet. But what if every seat was a toilet? Poop powered planes. To keep the plane in motion, we have to keep shitting. High pressure, I know, but it gives the airlines incentive to feed us. I'm not sure the numbers work. How about this? It's a toilet that you shit in, and it powers a cannon that shoots the shit out to my neighbor's house. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's not legal. A British behavioral specialist says Fortnite addiction is like heroin. Okay, Fortnite is not like drugs, okay? There's no rock star who died from video games. Elvis wasn't passed out on a toilet with his veins full of Pac-Man, right? <laughs> no other form of entertainment gets the bad rap that video games do. I mean, why does 20 straight hours of Fortnite mean you're addicted, but binging Marvelous Miss Maisel means you're sophisticated? Oh. <laughs> And so what if I sometimes miss work because I was up all night playing Fortnite? I just tell my idiot boss I lost my voice, like he does all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> you have one job. But fine, these so-called specialists say it's an addiction. And now the innocent kids are paying the price. Some parents are so worried their kids are spending so much time playing the popular game, they're taking a drastic step and sending their kids to video game rehab. Well, this year, the drug of choice, as we call it, is Fortnite. Michael Jacobus runs Reset Summer Camp, a four-week program that focuses on teen tech addiction. When kids are at your camp, is it like a detox? Yes, absolutely. With no devices for a whole month, the camp focuses on therapy and teaching life skills like cooking and laundry. Okay. Cooking and laundry is not rehab. It, it's what makes you want to play video games in the first place. Okay, no kid has ever been like, hey, washing my filthy clothes is so much fun. I'll never play video games again. If I wanted to cook and do laundry, I'd play The Sims, all right? And the blame keeps going because according to some Fortnite, isn't just damaging kids, it's ruining marriages. An online UK divorce service says 200 divorce petitions cited Fortnite this year. That was the reason for the split. Put the controller down. Fortnite. Don't blame Fortnite for your shitty marriage, okay? You made your wife sit and watch you play Fortnite day after day until one day you look over and she's gone. Well, guess where she is now, buddy? She's at my house watching me play Fortnite. <laughs> All right, we're back. And we're joined by a legendary guest from The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. He's a correspondent. It looks like he could bench, I don't know, 230, 240. Roy Wood Jr. is here. Oh, thanks, man. Actually, I can bench like 175 last I tried. Oh, wow, that's weak. <laughs> What's the smell? That's a deer carcass. Hey, uh, Roy, you are crushing it. Uh, th thanks, man, thanks. You, you're crushing it too, man. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, it's it's actually a problem how hard I'm crushing it. Uh, it's starting to affect the people around me and people I love. Uh, Roy, let me ask you something. You're a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. right? A lot of nights on the road. How do you stay emotionally connected to your loved ones while still maintaining focus in your career? The trick is to bring a piece of home with you. I'm just kidding, man. No one cares about that shit. Roy, let me ask you something. You ever done DMT? <laughs> You ever inject horse platelets? I don't even know what that is. You ever freebase the stuff inside of glow sticks? Who the hell does that? Ronnie, can I just, can I just talk about 
my, my Comedy Central shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, about sure, the web sure, series? sure, sure, sure. Right, right, right let me ask so you something. Web- you ever do LSD and have a threesome inside an aquarium? You just got shang banged. Can I, can I just answer the travel question you asked? Right, okay, the, fine. The travel question. Yeah, the original do you mind if I do some kettlebell travel. squats while, uh, while you talk? Hey, do whatever you need to do, man. I just want to have a normal conversation. Thanks. All right, uh, so when I'm traveling, uh, FaceTime is the way for me to uh, go. If I can FaceTime with my child uh, before bedtime, uh, because usually no. my first show at eight o'clock Three. is around the same time as my Four. son's bedtime. Five. So before I go on stage, Ten. I make sure to FaceTime with my child. You got this, Jack. Come on. Come on, man. And so normally. Pain is just weakness. Leaving the body. When I'm offered a gig, I have to look at how many days is this gig going to keep me away from my family? And that's not what I used to do when I was a younger comic. Right, I would sure, take any sure, gig. sure. Hey, yo, I just did like a hundred squat things, by the way. Not sure if you noticed me uh, just ripping metal there. Uh, yeah. It's a real lifestyle choice. Trevor, you probably don't know this, but today is Earth Day. So to celebrate, I got you some Earth. Oh, whoa! <laughs> You're Money, welcome, Trevor. As we celebrate Earth, we're also trying to figure out how to save it. Take me, for instance. To help cool the planet, before I left my apartment today, I turned the air conditioning on. What? <laughs> no, no. Isn't that contributing to global warming? No, oh, stupid. I left the window open, of course. <laughs> but unfortunately for the Earth, not everyone's solutions are as practical as mine. How can humankind tackle global warming? There are some scientists proposing a technique that's similar to the Earth wearing UV protection sunglasses, apparently, to block out the sun's harmful rays. Basically, what the proposal wants to do is it wants to send airplanes into the stratosphere, effectively spraying it with aerosols into the atmosphere, almost kind of like working like you're adding extra clouds. When you do that, you essentially are trying to block more of that sunlight. So your solution to save the planet is to spray more shit into the atmosphere. (laughs) Let me ask you, what's the point of saving Earth if the whole thing looks like New Jersey? (laughs) And also, also, there's no way that will work. It's like trying to get a coffee stain out of your shirt by using blood, okay? Don't believe every life hack you read on the internet. We don't need to dim the sun. We already have two dim suns. They're called Eric and Don Jr. Hello, high five Trevor, come on, come on. I'm I'm not gonna high five you. I'm not gonna high five you. Oh, sorry, didn't know you were a Trump guy. Anyway. (laughs) I'm not sure if you're familiar with the internet or TV, but if you are, you've probably seen this that happened a few days ago on Fox News. In the first presidential debate, China was mentioned 12 times. So we sent waters down to New York's Chinatown to sample political opinion. Okay, first of all, let me get this straight. They say China in the debate, so you go to Chinatown (laughs) in New York. So when they mention Mexico, do you send someone to Taco Bell? (laughs) Chinatown is nothing like China. They got nothing to do with each other. That's like if they brought up women's rights, so I decided to go over to Fox News to get some opinions. (laughs) Now, as dumb as that premise is, it is nothing compared to the idiocy that followed. And by the way, we haven't added anything to this. This is the original footage from Fox News. Am I supposed to bow to say hello? (laughs) I like these watches, are they hot? JC Penny, 398. (laughs) Who are you gonna vote for? Clinton wife. Clinton's wife has a name, what is it? Oh man, (laughs) I'd forget it. Uh, Snap out of it. Do you know karate? Yeah, I know. Hit my hand. (laughs) Oh, that's the spot. Is it the year of the dragon? Rabbit? No, it's actually the year of go f- yourself. <laughs> what the hell was that? How was that on the news? In fact, how was that even on TV? Where the f- did this come from? I mean, everyone's been wondering who'd be the target of 2016's worst racism. I didn't even know Asians were in the running. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, if you're gonna be racist, at least get your stereotypes right, you ignorant sack of 
Karate isn't Chinese, it's Japanese. And you're doing it in a Taekwondo studio, which is Korean, you f***ing jack off. Jack on, jack off, jack on, jack off. <laughs> this guy. And seriously, Mr. Miyagi, update your reference material. That's like me making fun of Americans for Saturday Night Fever and Mr. T. Yeah, real topical stuff, buddy. If you want to come at Chinese people, make fun of China's high pollution or the fact that they censor most of the internet, which in this case might actually be a good thing since no person from China will ever have to watch your garbage attempt at comedy.